Hey there everybody, I'm Andrew Helbig, and in this video, we'll be learning some of the fascinating history behind this little instrument, the kalimba. This video is actually mostly from a recording that I did last year, but hadn't put together or finished editing until now. And I've also recorded a traditional African tune and put it at the end of the video. So I hope you enjoy and learn a few things, and I'll let my former self who hadn't gotten a haircut for a long time, take it away. So the kalimba is a musical instrument based off of the mabira, an African instrument thought to trace back around 3,000 years ago, traditional to the Shona people of Zimbabwe. And though I just said that mabiras date back to around 3,000 years ago, they might have been invented twice in a way. The first time, around 3,000 years ago, they were made completely of plant material, probably from bamboo. And then the second time was around 1,300 years ago at the time of the Iron Age, when someone got the bright idea to use metal tines instead of bamboo tines. As the Mabira spread across Africa, separate clans and tribes each created their own version. As time passed, each clan and tribe made modifications to the original design. You find them all over the place. This one comes from Zambezi, this from southern Rhodesia, this one up here. That's central Tanganyika. That's a very nice one. This little fellow here, that's nice to land, it's got a very sweet tone. That's a particularly sweet tone, little one. I only got it last year. This big one here, this fellow, comes from Uganda. <laughs> He's the grandfather of the lot. The kalimba consists of a wooden board with staggered metal tines attached, which is played by holding the instrument in the hands and plucking the tines with the thumbs, and possibly other fingers. And for that reason, kalimbas are also called thumb pianos. Musicologists classify the kalimba and other closely related instruments as lamellophones, coming from the Greek words lamella, meaning small metal plate, and phone, meaning sound. Unlike stringed instruments or air column instruments like flutes, the overtones of a plucked lamella are inharmonic, giving the kalimba a characteristic sound. The inharmonic overtones are strongest in the attack and die out rather quickly, leaving an almost pure tone. And when a tine is plucked, the adjacent tines also create secondary vibrations that increase the harmonic complexity of an individual note. Though the kalimba's roots are as an ancient instrument, it was commercially produced and exported by ethnomusicologist Hugh Tracy from the 1950s onward. These here are Africa's very special instruments. You only find them in Africa. We call them the hand piano because we haven't got a name for them. They call them, of course, likembe or mbira. As a matter of fact, they're dozens of names. Hugh Tracy was largely responsible for popularizing the kalimba outside of Africa. He and his wife collected and archived different music from Southern and Central Africa. From the 1920s to the 1970s, they recorded a staggering 35,000 recordings. In his efforts to spread awareness of Africa's vast musical heritage, he created an adaptation of the Mabira, known as the Kalimba. I'm actually developing, I'm actually making one myself here. This little fellow I've made myself. So Hugh Tracy adapted the design of the Mabira to better fit Western music by changing the arrangement of the tines, and also by making the instrument a bit smaller. Apparently in that process, he made over a hundred different prototype instruments, experimenting with different types of wood, different methods for attaching the tines, and different ranges of notes. You see, the tuning is quite different. These have uh, all sorts of tunings, pentatonic tunings, five notes, six notes, seven note tunings, all different according to tribes. And they don't sound anything like ours. You see, that's quite, quite English, you might say. So the tuning of modern day kalimbas will be arranged with the middle tine being the lowest note. Then to climb up the scale, you pluck using alternating thumbs. This also means that if you go in one direction, the tines are tuned a third apart, making it really easy to play chords. Fifths are just two tines apart, and octaves are on opposite sides. There are a ton of different kinds of kalimbas. 
For instance, there are treble kalimbas, probably the most common type, celeste kalimbas, alto kalimbas, pentatonic, African, and there's even chromatic kalimbas, which have standard tuning on the front and pentatonic tuning on the back, so they can play all 12 notes of the chromatic scale and you're no longer stuck in diatonic land. Beyond there being a ton of different designs of kalimbas themselves, you can do other things to affect the sound. For example, you can add some buzzers to your kalimba by either attaching them to the tines or to the body itself to give each note a kind of rattling sound. And you might notice that rattly sound, well that's the voice of the ancestral spirits coming through your karimba. This buzzing kind of sound is very characteristic of traditional African music. It's kind of like the OG distortion pedal. Listen to this Mabira, which has its buzz coming from some bottle caps attached to the body. Also, any kalimba with a sound hole can create a wah-wah or vibrato kind of sound by just covering and uncovering it quickly after hitting a note. So even though this is a little instrument, it's got a lot of history and actually a lot of flexibility with what you can play with it. So to wrap this video up, I really enjoyed this quote that I found on the educational resources from kalimbamagic.com. It goes like this. In addition to wide variation in design and sound of the instrument, each group of people use the mabira differently in their social lives. In some African cultures, the mabira and its modern descendant, the kalimba, is the personal instrument of choice, something to take with you to help you pass the time tending cattle or riding the bus. In some places, it is an instrument of celebration for weddings or an instrument to play for kings. It is used widely as an instrument to accompany the voice. As one saying goes, kalimba without singing is like rice without beans. And in some societies, it is a tool to attract the spirits of ancestors, to bring them back for a time so that their advice might be heard. The history and prehistory of the kalimba and mabira are diverse and rich. Standing in the 21st century, we can choose to look into the past and learn the traditional songs. Or we can choose to look forward and invent something new, just as the Africans have done all along. I choose to look both forward and backward, and I have found that it makes my kalimba experience that much richer.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a few things and enjoyed the video. Percussion in Rova Ngoma Matwasa was done by Danilo Mora. You can check out his Fiverr gig in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.